The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up three, Nasdaq down 18, S&P's up one, gold up 430, traded at 1488. You get silver down five cents, seventeen dollars fifty-one cents an ounce. Light sweet crude flat, fifty-seven dollars thirty-seven cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the ten-year up seven ticks, one twenty-nine oh five. Thirty-year up twenty-four at one fifty-eight twenty. In king dollar, king dollar down one hundred and thirteen ticks, trading ninety-seven eight sixty-nine. The euro is at one ten. The yen is at one oh nine, and the pound is at one twenty-eight to one U.S. dollar. And uh, Uber. Let's let's hail an Uber, man, quick, because they're all going to be gone in no time. Uh, man, maybe all those oh shares man. are going to be gone, huh? 66 million shares, folks, down first day of a big lockup. Uh, it's at all-time lows, uh, trading 20, approximately $25. Yeah. Big number. Uh, and we, we know who's selling half of it. I'm in Mr. Kevin Hinks. Oh, boy, get him on the line. Let's see. He's <laughs> only, only kidding, folks. Yeah. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here. 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. You want to understand options, option strategies, futures. Great program. I'm sure there's plenty of people that were in Uber as it, they were buying and uh, uh, buying in a particular that they would have rather be in the option market than the oh, equity man. market. Okay, this is uh, the stock is almost cut in half yeah. uh, from the IPO of 45. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? This is where uh, defined risk can really help you. <laughs> Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. You know, guys, this just proves to me that in another life, I'm sure I was a salmon because going against the stream is kind of what I like to do. And I think eventually, you know, obviously today is going to be a horrible day in Uber, but eventually you want to step in and buy this. Yeah. Yeah, I was waiting to say a similar Let, thing, Kevin, listen, saying if you I, wanted absolutely. to be a buyer, right, you let all I mean, the insiders. It's never going to be cheaper. Let these weak hands yes. sell Uber and let people trade out of it, and this is probably when it's good to get in. Let this, uh, you know, this, you know, when they take the controls and let these people sell, let that wash out, and that's probably the time you want to nibble if you want to get in to Uber. And if you're already in Uber, this might be the time to double up and average down. You, you know, now, now, that's me from a trading perspective because something beat up so bad, unless this thing's going out of business. I don't think, and I don't yeah. think it is. No, I think I, it, I, I, they I just got to figure out a way to make money. Oh, yeah. listen, longer I, term, I agree. I mean, yeah. they're around. They're going to change. They're already changed the world practically. Right. You know? Yeah. I was I looking, mean, and you can't come back from that. No. No. And I was looking at it yesterday, thinking the same thing that I, you know, it's a buy here. And I, <laughs> I, did too. And I, and I said to myself, "Stop it, man! Just, just stop it." You right can now. give it a few days if you're a long-term <laughs> right. buyer. Exactly. Seriously. I like to trade when something, when some event, Tom, like this comes out. Yes. I want to wait till day two. Sure. Yeah. And let everything because. Think what, think what you could happen. Today's it's going to trade down hard, right? Yes. You just know it's going to be heavy. Right. Tomorrow might be margin calls and things like that, and yeah. people that have yeah. to get out. That's when you want to start nibbling. I agree. With the people that have to sell. Let it all sort out because no, there's going to be some some remnants left over tomorrow or the next day, maybe. Yeah. And, and be greedy when people are nervous, and oh, be nervous right. when people are greedy. Uh, I like it's it. It's so true, man. I mean, it's and it's so basically hard to do at most times but oh, it's, 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 it's so very true. hard they yeah. got 67 million shares traded what did you pull up the most active the next biggest stocks at like 20 million oh, and they yeah. had shares i mean the, the the stories kevin we're seeing them all over the place i mean they goldman sachs execute, executing a trade for two million shares early on at yeah. a four yep. percent discount to the market basically saying right. get me out even if it's at a I'm discount sure there's people that just remember if you're in the venture capital world and this lockup ends yeah you need to, for you to play the next play. Right. You gotta get. You gotta be liquid. It's time to move yeah. on. And you gotta have cash to do that. So at least some portion. That doesn't mean they're gonna sell a hundred percent. I think that would be crazy if they did. Yeah. And they're they're pretty smart guys, so they won't. But they'll sell some. 
That's yeah. for sure. And move I, on to the next one. And I, How's I, that print? Yeah, I just pulled up, Kevin, the, the block trades, right? Sure. So uh, it's like insane looking at this. It started at 8 o'clock this morning, 692,000, 600,000, 273. This is at a pop, folks, when you're yeah. looking at these. This is someone. So, so the cool thing here is when you actually look at this, pitch it, someone was selling it. But guess what? Someone was buying it. <laughs> sure. Exactly. Totally. You know? So it's like. And just like you're saying, Kevin, that could be somebody that's saying, hey, you know oh, what? Yeah. I know we might face a little turmoil. I'm going to be a longtime buyer. I'll buy at a 4% discount today, even if the stock goes down 5, 6, 7, 8% because I'm not selling it tomorrow. I'm that's selling right. it whenever I'm selling it. Yeah. Exactly right. So it, it's pretty wild. You know, Jamie Dimon had a quote yesterday, Kevin. Uh, I'm not sure whether you saw it or not. This was about the WeWork deal. And they were asking them, you know, about. You know, you guys were behind this, you know, what lesson have you learned? And he says, I learned a lot of lessons, too. He says, the reality is, is that, you know, these private equity companies, they are not um, price, uh, you know. When price we, discovery? Yes, thank you. When right. he, he says that it's just price discovery is not there. He says, until you get into the public market, he says, what we realize is that that's what price discovery especially is. Especially when it was just uh, one yeah. Fun, one firm, right? You know, right. the SoftBank. There's yeah. no discovery when it's one company that's pricing everything. Yeah. You know, and I, I had the privilege years ago when I was the specialist in Bank One, and Jamie Dimon was the CEO of Bank One. I got to spend the day with him. Really? And wow. yeah, and he is. He's an animal. Yeah. He's a rock star. Right. I, I really liked him a lot when I met him. And what I liked about that interview with Tom, and I did see it. You know, the interviewer tried to corner him on something. And he goes, you don't know. You don't know what we were doing and what we were thinking and how we were advising them. Sure, Everyone right. assumes that, you know, what he tried to get him on a gotcha question. And Jamie Dimon was really? like having none of it. I really like him. Oh, that's cool. I, I've liked him since I met him. And he's, a, you know, he, he's an impressive guy. It's not much to not like in terms of the leadership he has right. and where he's put J.P. Morgan. And, well, in. and it was wild is that when he was at Bank One, Sandy yeah. Wild was the guy at Citigroup, right? And Sandy ended up basically pushing him out. And he was his mentor. And that was so lucky of him, actually, because imagine you're in charge of J.P. Morgan and Citi Citigroup. I'll take that all day long. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, J but J Jamie Dimon, I interesting guy. He, was, he walked in. He came into the trading pit where Bank One was trading in the GE pit at the CBOE, and he was standing around with the traders because he was an ex-trader. Yeah. So he was very comfortable in a trading pit, and I, I, really, I really liked him. Yeah, he needed that feel. He has that feel, though. That, that, yep, that's he a does. Big, that's, a, that's a big deal. There's no doubt about it. Well, you know, market-wise out here, bottom line is that uh, it's, we're laying at highs, right? Yeah. You know? Here's what it is, guys. I think, and Oliver Rennick and I just talked about this on the air. We know what good news is, right? Good news is good news now. But bad news, with the uh, pr pr productivity and cost number we got this morning that was a little light, uh, that makes the bond market rally. And I'm not sure bad news is bad news. I think bad news might be good news, too, because yeah. it, it makes bonds rally. So they're not really hurting us on a pretty weak uh, pr pr productivity and cost number. So it's kind of interesting where we're at here. Very, very tough time to be a bear. Let's put it that way. Yeah, and, and that even though you're a salmon going upstream, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I got I got that off our trading room, Kevin. I have to do that. One of the it was awesome. Mr. Bill put in the salmon. I have to watch those bears watch going them, upstream. Baby. Yeah, exactly. Don't be jumping if you're a salmon. That's right. Be careful. Listen, man, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show in 45 minutes, Kevin. Great talking to you guys. Thank you, you too, so man. Much. Isn't that cool? That's it, baby. Watch out. Stay under that water, man. Oh, under okay. the radar. Oh. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials up 11. NASDAQ is down 20. S&Ps are up one and a half. We'll come right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow Industrial is up seven. Nasdaq's down 22. S&Ps are up uh, one and a half. And if we do go take a look at that uh, Uber article. So some of the headlines are just staggering, man, to bring people. Because what was interesting was, right, is that I happened to just be jumping around on the Thinkorswim platform this morning. And I saw Uber. And I knew the um, expiration was, was expiring for the insiders to be selling. And I saw the stock was down. But I hadn't seen any of the real details, which are pretty remarkable, like yeah. we began to talk about. So a large stake in Uber changed hands before the market. Oh, and this doesn't even really sum up. I think this was probably, well, it's saying 948, all right? But maybe it was even updated, but it doesn't really get into some. We saw 7.5 million, right, on right. that when it's we were nine. talking to Kevin. Yeah. So Goldman Sachs sold about 2 million shares on behalf of an, of an unknown selling holder at 26.90 each, a 4% discount. Now, I think that big block trade we had on the Bloomberg was like 26.05, much more of a discount even than this price oh, tag, yeah. right? Uh, shares were offered at 26.75 to 27. Shares of 2019's largest IPO closed 38% below the offering price on Tuesday ahead of, and that's yesterday. The stock is down again today, 38%. Right. This could be, and this is where it gets really interesting, this could be the first of many Uber block trades on Wednesday, a trader said. Goldman Sachs itself held a 4.1% wow. stake in the company. Okay. 4.1%. Uber right. shares falling as much as 8.7% yesterday. Um, you have to imagine that they might be getting out of some of that, just like Kevin was saying that venture capitalists are getting out to do the next deal. Uber, uh, Goldman Sachs doesn't do deals to buy and hold forever. No. Right? They do deals They're to get an trading. equity stake 
Yeah, and, and maybe that's time to exit. And just like you said, so there's the 7.7 7 at 2602. I think that article referenced like 2695, yeah. which was a 4%. You can see right now it's trading 2735, still down 67 cents from the close yesterday. Uh, that's some volatility and volume now. 73 million. And uh, when you look There's at the a full turnover happening here. And how much? Let's I'll go right back to it. When I right. just wanted to see because it's you don't normally see this. And you you put this up, and this is where I found it, right? right. You pulled up the Bloomberg, and I said, Whoa, 70. But you don't normally they, they kind of go like this, right? There's a leader, there's 20 million, 18, right. 18, 31. Uber said 73 million shares, and that's huge. I mean, the block trades are only seven. The biggest block trade was 7 million. Yep. You take that off, you're still at 65. You take off the 2 million shares that they just referenced in Goldman, you're still at 63. Yeah. And like you were saying, let's see how many shares are in the, um, float. the float. 57 million. Yes. That's pretty intense. Yeah. No. No, no, that's the short interest. Let's oh, let's okay. really get this. As that's a much different number. You're, oh. you're talking about shares outstanding, 1.7 billion. The float, 965 million. Million, okay. Um, okay. But still, staggering number, man. When you think about, it, you have a float of 965 million. It is 10:20 a.m. and we've got 73 million shares traded. Right. And guess what? It's it just moved 500,000 shares since we started this conversation. We will let's, find let's out. Let's look at. Let me look at Go Lyft for, for a second. L Y F T. I mean this. This has to be affecting Lyft because just in the aspect of, look, at it's not. Look at that. That's impressive. Yeah. Lyft's up a dollar, folks. Would really, there's a lot of fundamental things going on right now. Yeah. I, do you know when the lockup expires for Lyft? That's a critical thing when yeah. we look at it because Lyft became public first. Maybe their lockup has already expired as we get into, you know. I mean, yeah, I so. just, I'm just talking about even valuations that the. Uh, yeah. Know. Yes, it's, for sure. It's, for sure. That's a, that's a number, man. Definitely. Holy cow. Definitely. So, oil. We get oil, right? We sure do, we man. It's Wednesday. It yeah. is Wednesday. Let's jump around real quick first and pull up the whisper numbers. So we get the crude oil inventory numbers, 1030 a.m. Eastern time. We're looking for that number in about eight minutes. Let's see what they're looking for for crude. So they're looking for a build. Median survey analyst estimate, about 2 million barrels. The okay. whisper number on the Bloomberg terminal, about an increase of 1.4 million. We got about a couple minutes. Maybe we'll throw a guess in there just for fun. But um, the market getting a little bit of a bid this morning, man. And that's with a build expected. You're still getting, we were just at 830 at 5686. You almost traded up a full dollar, man, from yeah. 830. Quite a run. Up right until 10 o'clock, we make the high of 5779. You get the contract right now trading 5766. Yeah. And, and to see what kind of volatility they're pricing into here. The 11 a.m., so let's see, we're trading right now at 57.65. Would have an option where we could get volatility moving in either directions from 57.75. So you're only 10 pennies away. Your bullish spread, completely out of the money. That's going to be the cheap one at 14 bucks. The bearish spread, the one where you're going to have about 10 cents of intrinsic value, that one's going to be about 10 cents. This is where you want to get used to, right? You know that one's going to be 10 cents right. more expensive than this one because it's a similar amount of premium just the 10 cents of intrinsic value they have in it. So you're looking at about 38 bucks for the 11 a.m., representing 38 cents of movement away from 57.75. Keeping in mind, you got a 10 penny head start to the downside. Let's see where the noons line up. So a little bit of a different price point now. We could choose 58. That's a solid 34 pennies away. Um, or you could choose 57.25, again, about 30, 35 yeah. cents away. Now, what I like to point out when these line up, this, if you're directionally biased, not a bad trade, man, as in you're going to be paying very little premium because you have to put up a little bit of a chunk of intrinsic value, right. all right? So let's just say you're bullish. You think the run's going to continue. What's nice is contract's trading at 57.69, and this contract right now is trading at 57.78. You're only paying nine pennies. That's pretty cool. And for that nine pennies, you're locking in a risk-reward of... Two to one. Yeah. You know, not bad when you line those up. And let's just see where the dailies line up. So 57 bucks on the daily. There's been a lot of movement already. And 57 as well. A so little we're, way. we're trading. Just give me that number again. We were trading it. Um, I'm going to put in a before because we got 10 seconds just for fun. Oh. I'm looking for a bigger build. We're looking for lower, lower price in oil. All right. We right. got we got plenty of oil, man. Plenty of oil. No, 2.5 million barrels. We're I, looking for on I, the number. I agree because what's happening here is that the oil market, that's what is fluctuating on the swing point too. this. Uh, it, it got over it. Uh, Monday. Oh, what day? Yeah, got over it Monday. Came back under it Tuesday, I think. And 
You're probably back over it right now, but let's try to stay over this. Uh, there it is right there. So it, it did get over it yesterday. So that 5692 is the number. Interesting. I think yeah. this is a delay as well, right? Yes, it That's is. why. Yeah. So this we're trading a little bit lower right this now. 20-minute delay. 15, I believe. So. Man, you're at the highs. Interesting. Volume's dying. I think. I think. I think we're going to be right. I think that uh, the thing's going to back down a bit. Yeah. Intraday. You just got that pop. I mean, up. we I mean, Can we put it on a longer team just when yeah. you're done with this? Because yeah. uh, have we seen sixty dollar oil in a while? We had that spike. We had that so. spike. It, it, conti uh, it continues to get up there. Here, I'll we had the. I'll do the. Well, first I'll do this. Now. We had the big spike on the Saudi oil field, but that was a pretty right. quick, relatively. Right. I mean, that's you know one to two days. Outside of that. Um, yeah, no, 58, 32, and then we had the spike to 62. Yep, and again, that 62 spike was very short-lived. Yeah, it only one day. It closed, it closed the next day at 58. Yep, yep. and then can you back it up to I just uh, where were we? Because this is the last time, really. $60.54, we're going back to July um, outside of that, and then really you back things up if you want to get above there. $63 in May. Um, you know, and you start getting above there, we're going to, I mean, you know, we're, we're right at that critical level. And if pretty, we make that bid. It's pretty cool. Mr. Bill saying that we had the uh, API had a build of uh, 4.3. Okay. So that's quite that's quite a differential as to what the whisper is. Yeah, and was. they do vary sometimes. They do. But uh, we'll find out in three minutes, man, when we come back. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. 877-927-6648. Dow is down one. NASDAQ off 22. S&P's up one and a half. Come right back. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. That's a percent. 
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials down 17. NASDAQ off 33. S&P's off one and a half. And let's see what we got here. Yeah, so I think they might have mistaked the percentage symbol for the million barrel symbol, because I've never seen them list things as a percentage. But we'll get into it. You have crude oil inventories rising 1.81. I think that's going to be million barrels. Somebody's got some type, typo yeah. fat fingers over there on the Bloomberg terminal. And, oh, nope, that is not. Look at that. <laughs> that is not. So wow. shame on me. They're doing their job. 7.9. Go big or go home, man. What were we doing Holy with 2.5? So, with that, that in mind, that's a build. Drum roll, please. Yeah. Oh, come on. What are we doing? There we go. There we go. I was like, catch up, yeah. catch up. Um, so my only mistake was not going big enough. Yeah. Um, 57.37, the price of crude. As you'd expect, you get a big build like that. You're going to see a price drop. Usually, not all the time, right? Right. Um, that's, a, that's a monster, right? That is a monster. We'll jump back to it in a moment. But you just saw the price tag. We were trading about $57.65. We're now trading about 30 cent drop. If we were looking at those contracts of the 57.75, right? We were looking for about 40 cents for the 11 AMs. Yeah. Um, you got that in a heartbeat because we had a little bit of a head start to the downside. Um, and let's just jump back. And so, yeah, gas inventories. Yep, so we have crude inventories rising, 7.93. Gas inventories falling, 2.83. Market going to see a little bit of volatility, I imagine, on those. And pretty remarkable that they, they have this percentage. I'm not sure what that is. I've yes. never seen that pop up before. Um, but nonetheless, almost 8 million barrels, and there's the headline. So crude rising 7.9 million barrels. The estimate was right around 2. Gasoline, a miss as well in terms of lower 2.8 million barrel draw. The estimate was only a draw of 2. And uh, let's see, distillates down 622,000. The estimate was a decline of 1.2 million barrels. And uh, look, at, look at this is always interesting when you really get down to the fundamental basics of things, right? Refinery utilization, a decrease of 1.7. They were looking for an increase of 0.7. All right. Um, yeah, and as, as you'd expect, lots of going on. Gas prices drop, then bounce. Now, Remco start. better get their IPO out quick. Oh, man, right? <laughs> Can you imagine them watching now, that? Now, what was the number again uh, that we're trading right now? I just want to look at that swing point. Uh, about we dropped about thirty cents. I'll just pull okay. it back real quick to see because it's going to be moving quickly. Fifty-seven thirty-one. We're okay, checking good. out now. Fifty-seven twenty-four. You better move quick. Yeah, fifty-seven twenty-four. Okay, I'm just yeah. Because this swing point, that's what the deal. We are. We're right yeah. there. Okay. Yeah, that's fifty-seven ninety-two. So no, fifty-six ninety-two. Let's oh, get thank it. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So that is that has yeah. a little bit more to get to get underneath that. But, yeah. You know, well, that give give a, it a few minutes, man. That, that's a oh, it's a monster build. Right. There's no doubt about that. It's a monster build. The uh, maybe we can go into some of the uh, like CVS. I know they uh, their earnings. Uh, they're closing 22 stores. Pretty interesting in light of the story that broke out yesterday, right? You see Walgreens Boots maybe going private, man. Yeah. Nothing like a private equity firm saying, hey, how about we buy a company for 60, maybe 70 billion dollars because we think it's undervalued. It's unbelievable. It is, and that doesn't even tie into CVS having their right. earnings closing down some unproductive stores. It looks like. Um, but let's see. Let's see. Ah, uh, this is going to, I think, let's see. Well, they raised the forecast. That's what it looks like at the okay. top, right? I mean, look at that. So let's see. Despite ongoing pressure from politicians and consumers on drug prices, including the role of companies like CVS that manage patients' pharmacy benefits, that's the pharmacy benefit manager unit, is performing well. Revenue at the business called Caremark up 6.4% and adjusted operating income rose 5.7% to $1.44 billion. Um, that's amazing. It sure is, man. At the company's brick and mortar pharmacies, retail sales rose. Good news in an industry that's been beset by pressure from online competitors. Rent a store revenue was up from a year ago thanks to sales of beauty products and over the counter cold and cough medicine. The health yeah. insurance business CVS acquired with its takeover of Aetna last year is proving highly profitable. Wow. Yeah. Yep, selling prescription drugs, man, and just over-the-counter drugs is, is, is a monster business. And now that you got winter coming, uh, all those ads are going to be everywhere of all the colds that people are going to get up. Sure. You know, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a monster number. There's no yeah. doubt about that. Let's go take a look at some of the higher volume equities that we have out here. We know Uber's getting smoked. What are they up to now? We were at 73 million shares when we last looked. 79.88. Yeah. There we go. So you got, uh, you know, we'll have to go to Hewlett Packard. Uh, yeah. Hewlett Packard's numbers, up $2. Man. That's up 10%. Uh, yeah. 
We have uh, CVS. We went through that. It got uh, whoa. Office Depot, man, up thirty cents. That's like fifteen percent. Mm, there you go. They beat. Okay, so they beat. They they sure uh, did. Oh, Weight Watchers. This <laughs> this this stock blows my they mind. They call it WW now. They oh, don't want to be associated. No, I say it almost yeah. uh, sarcastically because the, that's the, what everybody. I heard analysts talking about today saying WW came out with their earnings. Said okay. man, everybody knows Weight Watchers, but they don't want to be associated with that like diet weight pressure they want right. to be about you know health well and this is the one of the most volatile stocks i mean it's just you can uh, bring it back 2008 was trading at 17 dollars go up to 2000 and what was that 11, 11. 13, uh, 86 dollars good go down to 2015 yeah 367 then it makes a monster run to 105. and that's where i think you had oprah go in there with right a huge there. stake in 2016 oh. at the lows yeah she, she became a spokesperson if she sold her stock she made a fortune i, I mean, don't think she may have yeah but uh and then she, then the ride back down the ride back down got it down to 16 and then we got up to 38 now you're at 31. It's pretty, can we get into the cn yeah. for their news Oh, sure. Either way, you can yeah. jump around. Let me just see what the revenue was. Here. Yeah. They got 18,000 employees. So $1.4 billion a year, $348 million. Yep. But look, they, they're, they're growing North America, continental Europe, only yeah. the United Kingdom. Something tells me that they, um, when that stock ran from 16 to 100, that they were factoring in more growth than 10%. Uh, Slightly. Let's see. Yeah, and that's where slight sales miss disappoint street after run up. And that's what we're talking about. You know, you price in a bigger beat, maybe. So, WW, formerly known as Weight Watchers, tumbled pre market after the weight loss and wellness company, wellness company, um, third quarter sales and gross margin trailed the estimates. So, after a 29% interquarter move, quite a pop, slight third quarter revenue shortfall was not priced in, one of the analysts saying from Morgan Stanley. He dubbed the stock a show me story and is taking a wait and see approach. Yeah. Yeah, UBS agrees that certainly into 2020 lingers, even as WW is on track to end 2019 with more subscribers year over year. And the stock fell 16% before the opening to 31.22. Unreal. Yeah. Let's go take a look at the SMHs for a couple Tigers out here. So this thing has been on a tear, there's no doubt. Uh, you know, if, I believe yesterday was probably another all-time high. You know, dying on the vine, but uh, bottom, let me put this on a weekly for a second. Yeah, I mean, look at the streak. That's quite a vine it's had, if Isn't that's it? what dying looks like yeah. to be. 107, <laughs> Fair. I'd 107 say that's pretty strong, man. All the way up to uh, pretty 134. Strong. Pretty strong. Yeah. And inside of this, I mean, it's curious as to the largest holding inside of this weight structure. Let's see. So we're at 131. Okay, so Taiwan Semiconductor is 13.3 and yep. Intel is 11.5. There you go. And then NVIDIA, yeah. ASML, yeah. TI, AMD. Yeah, yeah, but those two, man. 20, it's about a quarter of the percentage between it's Taiwan a, and Intel. It's a, it's a big number. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We're going to be coming back with our man, Teddy Kegstat. Folks, we are going to be talking currencies. Oh, boy. Yeah. There we go. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down 13. Nasdaq's off 30. S&P's a flat. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstad, as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at forex-trading-unlock.com. That's forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstad, what's going on? Good morning, guys. You want to talk about the yen, your favorite currency today? You know what I'm so... You just picked this out of my head. I was going to stop with you because this 109 29 109 30 is driving me out of my mind, man, because that, that number, if it goes over it, I'll be in trouble in the gold market. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? I think that you might have a good shot at that happening. Okay. There might be some new highs. So you might, I think that might be something to definitely pay attention to. Yeah, no, I, it's charging into it. I mean, it failed the first time, right? It came up there again right. yesterday and I was just laying there, right? Right, yeah. right. Well, here's something I want I to point out to you. The dollar index looks like it's made a nice little turn. Except for the past couple of days, it's had a nice little bounce after it made some uh, new move lows on the daily chart. Yeah. And ironically, the yen actually, where the dollar index has been trading lower for, since basically October 1st. Most of your major currencies have gotten a little bit of a lift in that period, okay? Except for the dollar yen. The dollar yen has been a bull in a, in a falling dollar index. Um, but we've had a little bit of divergence, though, because... If you look at the yen chart over the past couple of days, we've had a nice explosive rally off of that last uh, higher move low. Yes. And that's all in the wake of a little dollar bounce, too. So they've kind of gone in tandem there. But I think that that's going to actually fall apart. The dollar index is going to fall apart, and then we're going to still see the yen go higher. The dollar yen, that is. So when you look at the dollar yen, I mean, the, I guess you, you, my benchmark here is that, that 109.32. The last time we made it up to 109.29, yesterday you made it 109.24. Where are you looking? If we do break that, where where, do you, where are you looking that you, you might be that maybe you might be able to run to? Oh, I think that if we breach that, I think that we're going to start to establish a new base, and I think we're going to be up in the 110, 111, 112 handle yeah. maybe by the end of the year. Right, because that 112, that's the next area, right? That goes back yeah. to April of 2019. Okay. Yeah, and it would take about it's, it's going to take about a month and a half to two months to get there. I think. Yeah. Well, so. we'll see where that shakes out, man, because that, that, that would be a tough one for gold. There's no doubt about We've that. seen the reactions, sure. yeah. yeah. That, the, the gold sure. market takes conniptions, folks, when the yen gets weaker. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's good, it's good for your equity traders out there because if the, yen's, if the dollar yen is going in that direction, our exports will be doing better, you know? Oh, yeah. No, no, I'm with you there. And what, about, what are you looking at with the euro and the pound? 
Uh, the euro and the pound, okay, now there I think we're going to start to see a little bit more of strength, but not in that big of a volatile fashion, though. I don't think the euro can climb that high. I think the dollar index is going to keep on going lower, which will push the, the euro and the pound both higher. Brexit stuff, I mean, we're not even going to talk about that today. I mean, it's... <laughs> right? Why not? You know? We got a full month of the election, man. We've been, Plenty talk of time. We've been talking know. about it for two years. I know. Three. <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly. It's like, especially after Brexit not happening on the 31st. But I think this is good, though, because I think the dollar index really is your guide. Remember, we're heading into we're in fourth quarter. We're going into the end of the year. We're going to have a lot of balancing come the end of the month, getting ready for year end, you know. So it would make sense that right now we have a little rally to sell in the dollar index, which would push the euro higher, maybe get it back up to that, like, 113, 114, 115 area, but I don't. I see it being like if you look at the range in the euro and like the Swiss. The Swiss is the only currency that actually gets any real range on a daily basis. And now we have the pound where it's floating underneath highs and its range is getting really tight. It always scares me when you see the pound having tight ranges, even in slow markets. Okay, let me ask you, um, Teddy. When we talk, uh, you know, at the end of the year with the balancing, right? How exactly does that work? I, I you know, like. Is it companies that they're going to bring dollars back and euros back? Or how does that work coming into the end of the year? Okay, well, then, you, okay, that's a good question because on the company basis, you do have a currency balancing where people may want to reposition themselves for January, especially with their books. Sometimes you want to end the year on one note in one way just to set yourself up for the beginning of your first quarter. Okay. You know? There's definitely a balancing, and that depends on each individual. Like, if let's say you're a coffee importer from the United States and you're coming out of Brazil or, you know, out of South America, yes. you know, you definitely might want to have something to do with your contracts, depending on your positions and any type of deliveries you may have. You right. Know? <clears throat> and then you have something like an auto manufacturer. It's a totally different case, you know. So... But they, they all say, they, the majority, I mean, I've, I've read about it so many times, but so the majority, whether it's large companies, they, they basically like to do that at the end of the year. I wonder if that's an order and a what's, what it's for. Do you know what I'm saying? To, to really get probably a better understanding of the balance sheet. I think so. I think because it doesn't matter what their accounting set cycle is, they all go on quarter basis no matter what. Yeah. So I think it's really for that um, purpose, you know. And then you have your banks as well. They do a lot of balancing too on month end and quarter end, let alone year. Okay. Okay. So this currency business is pretty cool business. I mean, it's been fluctuating pretty intensely. That's a real volatility. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But like I said, I think that you're not going to see much of like, in the, in the year, like I think the yen is where you have your biggest potential for swings on a daily basis and even on a trending basis because the euro, no matter what the news is, like they tried to break it down and you didn't get any severe breaks. Like it's only because we're looking at it on, on it's, the volatility has been so low that it looks like it's actually been swinging around the past like few weeks, especially. And it really hasn't been, you know, if you look yeah. at the ranges, right? You know, whereas so the yen, just as you say. The yen, I mean, the, not much in the game for you. Yeah, no, the yen's had some real movement, man. I mean, that, that movement, <laughs> you know, has been when we're open, not even when, you know, the, the bottom line when they're open, you know, versus and that, that's kind of intriguing and the aspect that there was more action yesterday when our markets were open versus their markets, you know. So right. someone's buying it, right, or selling it. Yeah, it was getting weaker, sure. someone's selling it. Okay, right. Pretty wild, man. No doubt about that. So I, I'm, I, I'm with you with the gold trade, too. Like, I'm watching that as well. Like, I think that we're coming to a nice little uh, friction point for that. Yeah, well, you know, it, it hasn't broken a swing yet. I mean, it's, it, what's so intriguing, the gold trade, to me, is just like the bond trade. It mm -hmm. came down fast and furious, but right. September 13th, that benchmark, neither one of them broke that benchmark. And the last two times they came down, you know, they basically came down and uh, what ended up happening uh, with that with that baby, uh, I guess gold is... That's on, October 1st. October 1st yeah. and the bonds uh, September 13th. Okay. Um, you, hit the, you hit the day on the head right there. October 1st was a big turning point for uh, currencies, interest rates, and metals. Yeah. 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 So, you know, to me, if you we, when you can't make it to the swing point, even if you, have, you know, you get some juice behind it, it's like, okay, why not? That means that there's buyers that are sitting there, you know? So... And then, of course, the bonds. <laughs> that, that, that's 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 just that's going to be a story that's been going to be written in, in a huge way, you know. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So.
pretty crazy. It's it's. We're not even talking about oil. Remember how we used to use talk about oil? We haven't even talked about that in a while. For some reason, that's kind of off the table right now. It's tough to compete when other markets are rocking and rolling. But oil, yeah. And we just had right. We just had the oil numbers steady at 10:30. It's like almost an <laughs> 8 million barrel build. Bill. So mm -hmm. we might see a little lower price That's, today, but we'll find out, man. That is, I'm uh, happy every time I go to the pumps lately. Right? Yeah, well, listen, we were talking about that with Kevin Hicks. Same, it's, it's so true, man. I mean, it's, 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 it's a big deal. It's cash to the bottom line. Well, listen, That's, man, you have a great one, a safe one. And folks, you can reach Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy, we look forward to having you next Wednesday. Thanks, guys. You have a good day. Have Thanks, a Teddy. One. You too, man. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have it out on 14. That's like our 32 SMPs flat. Come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so oil, a 57.18. Yeah, so a little bit of a drop. The slide kind of continuing. We're trading 57.65, down about 50 cents on that news. But as we know, man, sometimes that market will trade all day off that. Oh, market, yeah. And we'll see. There's no doubt. And let's jump around to a few stories. So this one first, as we wrap up the show, you got 50 grand to spend on a night at the Park Hyatt? Yeah. Well, they got a room for you, man. And it's a seven-day minimum, folks. Oh, I didn't gonna, even catch yeah, that. Yeah, this is going to start. They're going to start taking reservations Wednesday. This is pretty amazing, actually. And it's not even that big. It's 4,200 square feet. Yeah, 
butler chef walk-in closet styled by Nordstrom with clothes for purchase and an 11-foot high ceiling. Sweet guests can take helicopter rides to and from the airport. You better if you're dropping $350,000 for seven nights. Uh, and speaking on big spenders as well, yeah. man, you brought up this story. So how about uh, the Vegas nightclub scene? So the Palms Hotel closing down their club after putting in some serious money. So they took a $28 million write-off and it's the Chaos Nightclub at the Palms Casino, and you have the Fertitta Brothers. I yeah. believe that's the million-dollar buyer on that CNBC. Remember, the, he's the Houston and Rockets owner as well. So bought it for three. And I think they own the uh, the fighting thing too. UFC. Yeah. Do they? Okay, yeah. I'm not sure of that one. If it, yeah. um, they may. Uh, 313 million they bought it for. Spent 600 million. The one thing I found interesting in here is that they talk about. The nightclub patrons did not have spendable money. We didn't see a crossover into the casinos. Right. Um, many times, that's what you've seen. You know, they spent so much money to bring these DJs in. Just I know. Massive money. And the goal is, you bring them in, you don't even have to make money in the nightclub, right? You make money when people go out to the casino tables and drop $50 a hand on blackjack or something. Right. Uh, and just not there, man. And just, wow. it's been open for only eight months, and they're closing it down. Stay right there, folks. We get our man. Uh, uh, we have the TD Ameritrade, Kevin Hicks, coming up next. Our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave Wright. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, man. Yeah, go get him, folks.